Welcome to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Saturday, October 21st. We are talking about top takeaways from the Jaguars' big Week 7 win over the Saints in New Orleans. The Jaguars, of course, now 5-2, and two, heading into a mini-bye week. They don't play this weekend after playing on Thursday Night Football. And then they have the Steelers right after that. So this team, looking at the top takeaways for me from Week 7, they are not perfect right now. And they never will be. But they are resilient. You have seen that time and again. And they are winning football games. They are growing as a team. And in my opinion, that's all you can really ask for in October. It's early, right? You don't need to be peaking at the end of September and getting into October. You want to be peaking end of December, getting into January, and try to get into that game in February, right? So for me, their ability to grow and win games at the same time has been really impressive. I think they will continue to grow. And uh, this is a team that that is well coached and has the talent to, I think, compete with anyone. I think they've shown that even in the games uh, where they've played some of the top teams in the league this year. You know, the Chiefs, the Bills, they beat the Bills. They hang in there with the Chiefs. They really just have had one disappointing outing when it, when, when you look at their schedule this year. And that was against the Texans where they just couldn't get out of their own way. And I think that game was kind of a uh, wake up call building block type of game for them. We can't let this happen again. And so far since then, they've won four straight games. So for me, this is a team. It's not peaking right now. It's not at its final stage, its final form, but it's a team that's winning games and, and figuring out how to win games in the moment, despite not being at full strength, despite not being where they want to be fully on either side of the ball. And I think that's really encouraging. Now the Jaguars, this is my second takeaway. They just have one game now in the next 20 or so days. It's against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they're going to have some time here to get rested up, right? The mini buy this week before the Steelers, then the actual bye week. And then of course they'll, they'll take on the 49ers in Jacksonville after that, but they're going to have some time to get rested up. And I think that's huge for them because they have played four games in about three weeks, um, and they've been missing some key pieces. Walker Little, Devon Hamilton, Zay Jones, Tyson Campbell, the other corner depth that's been out, Gregory Jr., Christian Braswell. I think you're going to have some opportunities to get guys back on the field to get closer to full strength heading into this stretch run of the 2023 NFL season, and I, I do think that's huge for this Jaguars team because, look, the way they've been playing so far, You know, Buster Brown was able to get good experience with Tyson Campbell out. I think that's huge for you. Uh, Zay Jones, I think the offense, once he returns, will really have that other element uh, that I think that they've been missing. And that's a guy who can stretch the field, who can make big plays for you uh, beyond Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley, and Evan Ingram, right? Uh, Devon Hamilton, when he returns, he's been your best interior defender the last couple years. The interior of the defensive line has played really well without him so far this year, but with him, they should be that much better. And of course, Walker Little, you know, when he was in there at guard for the brief amount of time that he was before he suffered the knee injury, he was looking excellent and he played excellent at left tackle this year. So you look at these guys you're potentially getting back, and I think you could be looking at a much better team in the coming weeks with the guys returning from injury. And I, I think that even with the guys returning from injury, you've built better depth by them being out and having to rely on other players. So I think it's been really good for the Jaguars um, to be able to overcome those injuries and get wins. Looking at the defensive side of the ball specifically, I think Mike Caldwell has legitimately been one of the best defensive coaches in the NFL this year. The way he has been able to deploy guys in the right way, the way he's mixing up his fronts and his back end, and it's cohesive. Last year, I think you saw some... So I'm trying to figure it out with the group of players that they have, with the group of talent that they have. This year, I think it's been much more locked in. All the players that are in their second year in the system are playing at a much higher level. Um, and, and, you know, start with the defensive front. You know, Josh Allen playing at an extremely high level on uh, at the linebacker level, like Foya Luke and Devin Lloyd both playing at an extremely high level. The entire secondary pretty much has been balling back there. And I think you can, you know, Trace it all back to Mike Caldwell, the way he's deploying them. He switches his fronts up. He switches his back end up. He has Andre Sisco out there, who is an incredible talent at free safety. So much range and versatility to his game. I think that Mike Caldwell is pulling the right levers at the right time right now. And it's making it really difficult for opposing offenses to have any sort of consistency from drive to drive um, and quarter to quarter. So Mike Caldwell, kudos to him. He was a guy that kind of needed to prove himself this year. The Jaguars' defense last year, it was opportunistic. It turned the ball over a lot, which was obviously encouraging. 
Um, and they've continued right right on that same path this year, turning the ball over in an extremely high clip on the defensive side of the ball. But they've also been more consistent down to down. They're one of the best run defenses in the league this year, and they've been better in coverage than they were. And I think you can all you know point it all back to Mike Caldwell, his ability to get these guys going in the right direction. Um, I also think the Jaguars' offensive line is playing its best ball right now. They've had two straight good games against teams that present some problems, especially um, on the interior with the Colts and then two of the best uh, edge defender or edge duo in the league. When you talk about Carl Granderson and and Cameron Jordan and the Jaguars handled themselves just fine, obviously Trevor Lawrence was getting the ball out of there incredibly quickly against the Saints. But for me, I think it was a really impressive outing, uh, impressive last couple weeks for the Jaguars offensive line, again, without Walker Little, uh, without Brandon Sheriff at full strength. I think that this group is really moving in the right direction with Cam Robinson at left tackle, Anton Harrison at right tackle. I think you get Walker Little back in there at left guard, and you're looking at an offensive line that can probably compete at a much higher level than you saw throughout the beginning of the season, and that's going to help down the stretch, no doubt about it. Once you're trying to compete for playoff seeding, making sure you win the AFC South, and then getting into the playoffs if you have an offensive line that can help Trevor Lawrence, that's going to be massive. Um, And finally, I think the Jaguars offense, it has that multiplicity, that fluidity that Doug Peterson wanted to have going into 2023 he said he wanted that to be the offensive identity I love that I think they've got it because I think they can go out there and so so many different personnel packages based on uh, injuries they have based on the defense that they're going against just the way things are are rolling for the offense like the last few weeks they used a lot more 12 and 13 personnel Um, this week you saw them Calvin Ridley received a ton of extra attention so he wasn't targeted as much this week and you had Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram and all these guys popping off. And so for me, the Jaguars have the ability to be fluid. And I think that's exactly what Doug Peterson wanted. And I think once you get into the playoffs and and down the stretch during the end of the regular season, I think that's going to be huge because you're going to need to be able to pivot away from what you do well, uh, generally speaking, because teams are going to try to take that away. And in the playoffs, good teams will be able to take that away to a certain extent. You have to be able to pivot, to be fluid, to be able to, to to switch your game plan up a little bit and figure out how to attack opposing defenses. And I think that they're going to be able to do just that once it does come to crunch time in 2023. Uh, I think that's a really nice development for the Jaguars. And I think some of it has to do with the personnel that they've added. Some of it has to do with being in the second year in the system, being able to do different things. So uh, just good overall vibes for the Jaguars. Jaguars at five and two heading into this mini bye week before they take on the Steelers in Pittsburgh in week eight. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. Follow Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. You can hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Notification bell so you don't miss a show. Check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.